So, going into the holidays, everyone wants their perfect fluffy friend to look great. And if you didn't book with your groomer months and months ago, um, chances are you're not gonna be able to get an appointment. So if you want to try grooming them at home, I'm gonna show you in this video a few things that I have found really helpful to make the process less stressful for both you and your furry friend. Okay, stay tuned. All right, so one of the things we really like for nail maintenance is a scratch board. They're super easy to make. I have a tutorial here on YouTube, um, but it's basically just sandpaper, 80 or 120 grit and Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape, and like a piece of plywood, I'm using acrylic in this video. And then you can just shape a scratch, ask them for paw, and then I've added the scratch cue to it. He's not super motivated here to work with the scratch board. He just woke up from a nap, and his nails are pretty short anyways, but I wanted to show it for this. It's a great way for them to be able to opt in and opt out of nail trims. And if you've got sort of a long way to go, this is a good way to get them down, um, and then you can finish them with uh, like a Dremel. So I'll show that in a little bit here. But yeah, he's, he's like not into it today. That was a good crunch. That was a good crunch. So yeah, pull out the Dremel. I don't remember what brand this is off the top of my head, but I will look and put it in the comments for you. For this, I taught a paw cue, you know, shake, paw, whatever word you use for that. So I'll ask him for paw and then I'll ask him to wait. I started by just touching the Dremel to his nails while it was off with like no buzzy buzz and built up slowly to, uh, you know, Dremeling the nails themselves in short bursts. And I alternate toes because they can get kind of hot. So I just take a little off here, a little off there, go as far as we can and you don't have to do all the toes in one sitting, obviously, or even a whole paw. You can just do like one nail a day, whatever works for your pup. And if he pulls away, I reward him because I want him to know that he has choice. He's actually really good with this now. Um, we can get pretty far. Sometimes we can do two, three toes at a time. Those dew claws are, uh, yeah, dew claws are something else. Uh, but he's pretty good for those too. I think the treats I'm using here are Northwest Naturals freeze-dried chicken or freeze-dried whitefish. He loves both of those. They're great for training. You know, it's all about building trust and uh, making sure that your dog, cat, whatever, is uh, as comfortable as possible. So I use tons and tons of treats and really try and go at their pace, break everything down into itsy bitsy little steps um, so that it feels more manageable. Uh, and just start really slow and, and work your way up, you know. Got all the time in the world. Well, got about 15 years, let's be honest. But you know what I mean. And then here I've got a chin rest which I've been conditioning for a while. It's useful for so many different things. Here we are doing a muzzle grab so that I can look at his teeth in preparation towards moving on to toothbrushing, which is really important. He's hated the muzzle grab. Um, and so we've been working on that quite a bit recently and he's become much more comfortable with it, which is great. And his teeth are really pretty and I'm excited to start brushing them. And doggy toothpaste is like, that's like really tasty to them in theory. So I think we should be there before too long. Well, you know, chin rest is good for so many things. For kisses on their snoot, for brushing the top of their head, for checking their ears and, you know, administering drops in their eyes. Chin rest is like one of my go-tos for so many other um, behaviors. So here I have the wall bravura clippers that are what I use to groom Bunny and Otter's face and his paws. He's not super chill with his face being buzzed yet. So I've been working a lot on that. I'm using that chin cue again to get him in position. And then I'm just lightly touching the clippers which are off to his snoot in various places to just get him used to that sensation. Getting under the chin, another something I was like, how am I gonna do this? So I taught him a snoot cue, which you see right here. Get his little nose and chin in position and touch the clippers while they're off to the underside of his chin there. Um, get him nice and used to that sensation. And then we'll build up slowly to having them on. Another thing you can do is like make a buzzing sound with your mouth, although that just makes Otter like mouth punch me with his snoot. 
Um, so I don't know, maybe that'll work for somebody. Or you can use like an electric toothbrush. I've heard of that being effective because it's smaller, lower buzz. But yeah, he has had his face shaved, um, you know, several times by now. So um, he's used to the buzz. I think it's more so just the sensation right on his face there. So we're just like working up slowly, building that confidence with this. Oh, throwing in some kisses. Keep it light and easy. Love that. Here I'm using that chin cue again to flip his ears for ear inspections. I just wanna get him really comfortable with me messing around in his ears, maybe lightly pulling those hairs inside, putting my finger in. And uh, also I have like a epiotic flush um, and to desensitize that, you can just hold the bottle near the ear while you flip it. If you enjoyed this video and would like me to make more, please consider liking and subscribing. It's gonna keep me motivated to make some longer format content and uh, share my process with my dogs. All right, have a great day, you guys. Bye. Subscribe.